Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Pod Fathers, the best parenting podcast in the universe, tolerated by Barstool Sports. It's your pal, Clem, here. here. It's your boy, Lowe Jersey, with, I believe, his stock exchange trading jacket on. Daddy Boy in Texas, and we are back for another week of the Pod Fathers right now. Um, what's going on, boys? I, I apologize to the listeners. I know where you have some audio files, including one of the hosts on this podcast. If my voice sounds a little raspy, I've been screaming at my son since 530 this morning right now, who has been an absolute terror. School cannot come back fast enough. And then I oh, remember- disagree, Clem. I'm in school right now, and it's the worst. Oh, Chapsy, I was going to say, I'm pretty sure Chapsy has his kids back, and I am extremely jealous right now because I am losing my goddamn mind right we now. We had the first coming back from summer. Cardi goes into school. It must be like you – you know when you go into the old school cafeterias when you're in elementary school and high school, and they have the huge fans that blow down to keep all the different bugs and shit out? <laughs> they must have that, but just with, like, snot and boogers and germs that the oh. kids walk through whenever they first start to school all of them are sick cardi has like 25 kids in their school or in their class 12 of them were out the first monday out and the teacher not covid related at all everybody got tested nobody had covid everybody was sick as shit man i'm I'm sick of it already i had to go pick mccartney up on tuesday (laughs) <laughs> oh my gosh. So this is a good little thing for the people up north here, us Yankee folk that uh have kids going back, I think either the end of this week or the beginning of next week. Just be ready, you're boomeranging those motherfuckers. You're gonna throw them in and they're coming right back home with some sniffles, a fever, or something like that. Again, the immune systems have been shot for the last few years. We've had masks, we've had the social distancing, and at this point, we're just throwing these motherfuckers back in the soup and seeing how it brews together. My kids oh. are gonna be on fucking Christmas vacation before y'all go back to school. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I, I, I mean, Costco already has the damn Christmas decorations, Clem. I I was so cl- I'm so close. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. God damn it. I won't do it. But they need to know it's on the table. I mean, <laughs> we can't be having Santa before fucking Labor Day. It I mean, was the August problem 14th. You- I saw it. I mean, that's before pumpkin spice even comes out. <laughs> I did see a uh, pumpkin. Uh, Reese's peanut butter cups in the store, and I was like, I'll allow that. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna, yeah. I have, I stand on many hills. I don't, yeah. like, I like the special treat. Uh, power rank the just the Reese's pieces though. Uh, Christmas tree over pumpkin, Christmas tree over pumpkin. However, I don't know. I, I have to look at the, there was someone who once did like a ratio of the peanut butter to chocolate. I think they said the egg packs the most punch for its value. So the Reese's oh, egg, I don't want that much Easter peanut butter. Season. I feel like I go bunny. Christmas tree pumpkin. <laughs> Look at that. We're already jumping ahead to Easter right now. We're killing them. We're killing Costco for going to the Christmas. I mean, Costco ever being on the uh, the R word radar is a terrifying thought. It uh, is. Frank, I was complaining about the kids about something, and Frank the Tank sent me the old video of the uh, Staples. It's the most wonderful time of the year when the parents are dancing around. And that was when we were kids. It's the truest fucking commercial. I remember my parents telling me it was true. And I'm like, haha, yeah, like you guys just can't wait to get rid of us. And then I now as a mother, I'm like, you really are just like, get the fuck out of my house. You goddamn assholes. Speaking of assholes, how we doing, Pop Pop? Listen, Clem, don't wish them away. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the time's going to come where you wish you had them back. Whatever. I mean, yeah, go piss away this time, but just know it's very precious and fleeting. it's fleeting. It's not there forever. You know, like now he's, I don't, I don't know where he is now. I mean, I get an Uber receipt every now and again somewhere in Tuscaloosa, <laughs> but I would just love to hold him right now. <laughs> everything's, everything's cool with us. Just one more time. I, yeah. I just one more time. I would love to yell at him at 5 30 in the morning. These are these are precious times. You really don't know, Clem. You have no idea. Only I know. <laughs> I'm like that person that has a kid and tells everybody else how to, how to have kids. You ever, get, you ever get those sons, sons and bitches? They're the first people to ever have a fucking baby you know what I mean, in the world. Right. Yeah. I'm the first kid to send my guy away to college. AJ was on such a warpath this morning I told him I said he had a little football in his hand I said don't you throw that football at anyone He was throwing it, hitting people with it He then went, hit his mom with the football And then ran in to to snitch on himself He goes, I just hit mom with the football, dad I'm like, now you forced my hand And I said I had to throw it in the garbage So I faked, threw it in the garbage I put it in my pocket, threw it in, complete meltdown 
Uh, so you yeah, want to know? You really taught him a lesson. Yeah, you wanna... exactly. I'm such a so he knows I'm a softie. He's like, yeah, the bitch, the bitch hit in his pocket. I'll have that thing by by lunchtime. <laughs> you want to know how weird it is here? Like uh, how it's hit home. So Arturo's. Whenever we take the family to Arturo's, I get five at the bar, and my three kids will sit at the bar with Annie and I, which isn't legal, but they, uh, fa- the the uh, um, the owners allow it. They're the only kids that sit at the bar at Arturo's. No big deal. Uh, so this weekend I was, we were going to go sit at the bar and I was like, you know, only four, it's like weird how we fit in the uh-huh. sedan now and all that shit. So to make up for it, I invited Za. Nice. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was Annie, uh, Finn, Brid, Za, myself. Love it. <laughs> so, yeah. There's- so Zah's, Zah's taking the, the place of Mick. I saw a picture on Instagram, and it is Za and my guy Finn smoking a stogie <laughs> late at night. And I said it is the best picture I've ever seen in my life. I mean, two of the capital M, capital G, my guys just chilling. And so, all right. So Za went to the house, and I saw he 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 went to Twitter, and he said, "Hey, what do I bring as a gift for someone who's been riding for me for day one? You and Annie are obviously very close to him." How was our time with Zod? Did he bring a gift? Did he or did he bail on it? How, was it a good time? Tell us no, about Zod, the Yeah, Zod always brings a gift, but I think like sometimes it's weird too because when you don't know what people drink and whatnot, it's it's not bad to throw Tricky. out a little bit of chum like that. I answered him. I said, bring, <laughs> I said, bring four cigars. I said, you know, I was like, don't spend more than ten bucks. That's a very expensive cigar. And bring so he did. He brought four. You know, it's strange because, and I mean, from being displaced. I'm not like I'm an hour away from the house that I grew up in. You know, Clem's an eight hour and away from where he grew up in. Chaps has got that displacement. So I don't understand it. But Za, when he's desperate to go home, he can't. So when he comes over, I'm like, well, what do you want to do? You want to go to the city? You want to tear it up? Because every other time you see him on social media, it's him and, you know, Marty Mush face down in Hoboken. (laughs) So I'm like, how how, how much? He's like, I just want to be around a family. He's got, you know, like he's a. He's a very familial guy. Yeah, yeah. And he doesn't have the opportunity to. So, like, having dogs running around or having things go wrong and him watch how families react to things going wrong and stuff like that is, is an absolute pleasure for him. So, he winds up being a very, very easy guest, you know? And, uh, and you know, and on top of it all, we just, we love him, you know? Like, and uh, so, yeah, so it's always a good head, but you can really tell that he soaks it in. I, I, he, he'll be back in Africa at some point. Like, I think if, you know, like, we all wonder what the next step is if Barstool was to, you know, go away or something like yeah. that. And nobody really knows. But I think Za is the one who probably, I would bet, would be back over on uh, over in the motherland uh, at some point. So, yeah, just a fucking pleasure to have that guy over. You know, There's our, our Barstool superlative for the day. Most likely to end up back in Africa. Za. Thanks, Lars. Thanks for <laughs> yeah. Zah might be one of the most adaptable the people at Barstool, too. Yeah. Like, yeah. any type oh, yeah. of environment – you could put him in and he's going to do well from like high level business meetings to hanging out with Frank the tank. Like it, he can do it all. Just a all around great guy. He's a chameleon dude. Think about it. Like you said, business meetings, producing um, like the yak and stuff like that, or radio back in the day, the barstool classic. He's Being always out with troops. There. Yeah. Hanging out with troops. And that's the other thing I told large, I go, I go, I know you're going to probably go to Arturo's probably throw some back. Large will go drink for drink with everyone at the company. And most of the people at the company are like three times his size because we are just massive humans. Large, and I'm like, Large, he'll go one for one with you. But then the next day, he's out like a light. Oh, he can't get up, man. He's a he lot. is a sack of shit. Like, I, I was, um, he was like, Large, it's getting close. This is also adorable. Large, it's getting close to midnight. He's under the impression that the suburbs outside of New York shuts down at midnight. Like he thinks everyone like, like they automatically, the cops come around and make sure you're all wearing sleeping caps, perhaps. But like, he was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get an Uber. Like, you know, he was concerned about it. I said, well, there's two things. I have to go in early for a uh, interview tomorrow. I can drop you off tomorrow and you can gladly stay in my house. We had just gotten an Amazon package. I'll put a pillow in that box and I'll put you in that <laughs> suit because that's it dwarf joke um and i was like and plus you know <laughs> it doesn't shut down so around one o'clock in the morning i said make a decision Zod. do you want to stay here or do you want to go and an uber was there in 10 minutes and he was off but you're right he is an absolute sack of shit the next day we sat down in arturo's he had two of annie's drinks annie does uh double greyhounds like they're doubles in pint glasses so he had two of those then he had a espresso martini then he had a grappa 
and this is before we went back to my house. A couple of my old Wall Street buddies came over. Oh, we boy. smoked cigars. We drank some wine, had a couple of beers, and then we opened up a couple of ports. And he got to hear like old Wall Street stories and shit. He sang the Star Spangled Banner while Finn played it on the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> the nights at your house are so fucking crazy. <laughs> that's a Sunday afternoon, like Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, Sunday. Um, and it, you know, it's just <clears throat> we're we you know, we're listening to some some you know great music and whatnot. And um, well, I guess it's yeah, like to Chaps's point, it is a little bit more. Uh, it's different than the average Sunday night. You're right, Chaps. But I I, I honestly feel though that the family because Francis did it. Did I ever tell you that? The first time Zod did it, he came on radio on Monday and said, I went over there for Sunday sauce. I just wanted to be around a family. And, like, that was the first thing. We we sang Sean Paul till 2 o'clock in the morning, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Which families do. Yeah, yeah. Most families. And then, honest to God, two weeks later, Francis is like, can I do that? And I'm like, I guess. Meanwhile, Francis, you just got to go to fucking Maine, you know. Zal's yeah. got to go to Zimbabwe. <laughs> you're taking, train, you're taking advantage of me, <laughs> you know. So it, it's just nice. And and like you know, very we throw out the uh, the term open invite all the time, open invite. But that little son of a bitch can come over here just about any time. You know what I mean? It's just uh, you know, I I, I think he's a, that's a truly an open invite. You know, I have always been kind of a loner. I mean, really, I haven't gone home a lot since I left my house and I moved out when I was 17. And then I went to college and the Marine Corps and all that. And I've been here. I've never really been like a home kind of guy since I've been an adult. But I will say it was lovely going back. So I could totally see. Za going back to Zimbabwe and taking a look around in like 10 years and being like, you know what? It's time to come home. I could see that happening for sure. Are you making up for it? Uh, like, if you don't mind me asking, chap. So, like, you don't have to come to my house because you can now do a Sunday sauce tradition with your family. Oh, you're welcome to come to my house. But you can do a Sunday sauce tradition with your family. Do you find, like, you're, like, uh, making up for it? Like, kids, get the hell around the table. Come on. We got to do a Norman Rockwell. I never got this shit when I was a kid, you know? We always... I mean, that's one thing about my family is since Annalise has been involved for 13 years now, we've been married 13 years, the end of this month. God bless her, huh? Yeah. Stick with me. <laughs> fucking through. I mean, and not joke. I mean, my anger issues that I had when I first got out of the Marine Corps for her to stick around through all that. But we've always had the kids eat with us. I, I think that's probably my favorite thing that our family does is that we eat together at the table basically every night at least six mm -hmm. nights a week we're eating at the table together her call or your call both and it wasn't yeah. even like a conscious decision it was just like this is how it is and it just stayed that way it wasn't even a conversation that we're going to break from this one because we're so particular or annalise is so particular about the furniture she's not going to want a lot of the meals eaten on the furniture <laughs> so we stick to the kitchen there and we eat together and I, I think it's nice to eat together. I enjoy she it. Did she grow up that way since you didn't? She did grow up that way. I did too. My mom, okay. we all, me, my mom, and my sisters. My dad was always gone doing Navy shit, but my mom and my sisters, we always ate together. It was important for her. So I guess that's probably of all the family traditions, I would say that we have eating together as a family is the one that we stick with. Do you guys all have uh, like the same seats? Like we, um, yeah. We, we we stick like to the same seats in school. Yeah, pretty much. And then yeah. even when I go to my parents' house, which is right down the road, as large alluded to, like if the five of us, me, my sister, my brother, and my parents are there, we all sit in our seats. Like <laughs> you know, it's just one of those things. And it is it and is. And it feels like weird when you don't like going to yeah. church. You know, like if you go to the same church over and over again, eventually that pew becomes your pew. And if somebody walks in and they're sitting in your pew and they're like a guest, you're like, who the fuck do you think you are? Fucking guy. <laughs> my seat. We don't have assigned seats <clears throat> here in the house, yeah. but then when I go, you know, it's just, we don't for some reason, but when I go to my house in Brooklyn to eat with my parents, which I do, you know, probably quite a bit, thankfully, uh, I, we have a sign, like my seat is my seat. What know, about like, cars? Like, like, get the fuck up, Finn. Like that type <laughs> of thing. Or, you know, or yeah. like my dad had just had another knee replacement, <clears throat> so he's had to sit in this other seat where... You know, and so his seat has been kind of up for grabs. And like I sat in it the other day. You know, it's no different of a chair at all. As a matter of right. fact, it's, it's probably more sturdy because he's not a fat But your like ass me. knows it doesn't belong there. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and I don't. Yeah. So I, we don't have that here, which is 
that's something we got away from. Like because I spend so much time in the kitchen, I'd rather spend most of my meal up doing this, going back and forth. You know what I'm saying? And almost like you eat a lot at the bar, like right by the stove. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I tend to do particularly when we're entertaining. I don't, you know, I'd rather not sit down. Um, but yeah, that's interesting because the the sign seating. I wonder if that's going the way of the dinosaur. I wonder if our listeners like still all sit in their side. Su- Does AJ have a seat in the house? Oh, Does Sienna? I, I mean, AJ is basically, uh, you know, on the fence right now about having a place in the house <laughs> as of this morning. Uh, <laughs> his bed's about to be put outside. Will he may hate me? Hey style. That is a good question. We'll have Joey put out maybe a graphic or something. But yeah, we, it's, uh, my wife and I are like the two heads of the table. And then we got, my wife really wanted to Power have. Power move. Yeah. Power like move, the Vikings. By the way. I'm shocked that <laughs> the large. Adams like, the, Adam, the Adams family. The Adams family. I am Throw me sh- the salt. Zippy I am the shocked. Finest that, weed. <laughs> I am shocked large doesn't have, isn't like the head of his table. Like, I feel like that's a thing that large would try to impose. But as I, I've been to your house a few times. And you guys do kind of treat your watering hole is like the island in the kitchen. Not as much, you know, our centerpiece, I guess, would be the table there. But, yeah, we all have the seats. The kids are on the bench together, which we always wanted to do when we knew we were going to have kids. We're like, we'll put them on the bench when they're young, and then they could get into the seats. And then there's, you know, two other seats on the side that are just empty. They just collect dust for the last, whatever, it's been five years. Um, what about in, like, the living room? Do you guys have a sign seating there? Because if somebody gets to the far right corner of Mega Couch, there will be hell to pay. <laughs> Uh, we do not have assigned seating. Uh, it's kind of become the point now where wherever my wife goes, the kids just crawl on top of her and I just sit by myself. I am a fucking <laughs> leper of this goddamn house. Uh, I-, I need to get a mega couch too, man. I was, I was during the pandemic. I started going to it. A couple people said love sack. I'm trying to find myself a good mega couch because oh, dude, just do the same thing delightful. I did. I can't do that though. Then I feel like I'm copying you. Well, so what? Copycat. It's a great idea. What if Why someone calls me a copycat? The wheel? I already have the wheel at my house. <laughs> That's true. There's that no, is a no fair copy. point. There's no copy when it comes. Love sex, you can't get out of. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're a fucking turtle. It's like a papa uh-huh. sign chair. That sounds like and a delightful And who's going to go to your house and then come right over to my house? Not like people are going to know. <laughs> Za. <laughs> oh, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> That's all over. Jeez. Speaking of Za with those cigars, you know who's a big cigar guy large? Who's that? Eddie Barstool, get out of here! Can I? Did you have? Did you have any? Did you have any uh, cigars with Eddie down in Daytona? No, <laughs> I did. I had a cigar with Eddie uh, down in Daytona, and um, here's how it went. You know, large. Like I normally don't mind these Dominican rappers. Sometimes I go to Nicaragua <laughs> because uh, <laughs> Carl had introduced me to. But the Maduros, I find the rings more so than the light. <laughs> Eddie's supposed to come on now, isn't he? Eddie, Eddie had you promised. Were team Eddie. Yeah, I'm Bar- Team Eddie, 100. percent Womb to the tomb. Oh, fuck. We were so supposed- I think I think at some point I'm gonna have a conversation with Eddie as Biz. Did you know that Eddie did a great Biz impersonation? No, no, I didn't, I didn't know that either. Chief told me he does a great Biz impersonation. So I think we should have something where Biz talks to Eddie, but it's Eddie talking to me. You know what I mean? Like, I like it. <laughs> no, no I, I think no, we have to have Biz no be deal. you. You're Eddie, and then Eddie's biz. We need to do kind of like the, <laughs> right. the, the right. triple yeah, yeah. Friday there. Uh-huh. We'll work on that. We'll work on the surviving bar stool. I mean, that's who I'm rooting for right now is is Eddie. Big Ed, yeah, one hundred percent. We're all Ed heads here. I was on the fence because I love this O'Malley character. I love her. Mm-hmm. I went to um, that drink that they had. She's 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 pretty fucking funny. And I, I get along with Brianna. I never spoke to Brianna Chicken Fry until. Uh, recently, she's lovely. She like we were down in a um, rough and rowdy thing because they were all behind Alex Bennett, and uh, she really is lovely. So she's so kind because my older one is in kind of the age bracket that Brianna's mm-hmm. like a lot play, pays attention to Brianna, like a seventeen year old to twenty five year old young woman. And I told Brianna when I was up there last time, I was like, "Hey, my daughter's actually a big fan of yours. She follows you on TikTok and likes it." And Brianna pulled out her phone and shot like a little video, like, "Hey." And for me to give it to her, Kelsey thought it was like the op- it was awesome. That's, awesome. that's great. I feel like, yeah, if, uh, if, the, even with like the music and stuff, large uh, in the dozen, you get a lot of that shit because your kids are in it. So you're kind of a little more connected. You're much more connected to like the current trends of like the younger kids than I ever would be. I could tell you anything you need to know about fucking Bluey. You guys are rebuking <laughs> them blindly. So it's, it is kind of fascinating how that all works out. We so, can't uh, rebuke uh, Costco till I go. Yeah, I mean, you well, have to give me an opportunity to fucking go to this thing. I didn't want to say it on this show because it's something that Clem and I really bonded over. 
but the prepackaged meals from Costco that they have in the deli, Clem, is something we've had to stop getting because back to back, you know, the little, oh, they have no. like the Alfredos, they have the Alfredo chicken mm -hmm. that's in there that's pretty good. Spider leg in that bad boy. Spider Big leg? spider leg, too. Could have even been a roach leg. It was just enormous. <laughs> and then there was another one. It was like the Italian wedding sausage thing that they have. There was a roach in it. Oh my god. And so we were like done. I mean, I had to take the whole thing and fucking throw it away and then call Uber Eats. Wow. That that, that that extends the time where I'm gonna go to fucking Costco. I you know. think you think there's that type of uh disgracefulness within the thing where I'm getting the chicken bake? In like the best position. <laughs> oh, he's frozen. He's frozen. I yeah. thought he was fucking just so jilted. <laughs> He's so for people who watch this on YouTube, and by the way, you should watch this on YouTube because it's a very visual podcast. Uh, the power just flickered and Clem just said, are you guys still in the room? And we're saying yes. But he is frozen as Chaps is talking about spiders and roaches in the pre-made meals at Costco. <laughs> Clem, is he's perfectly dejected. In that one, in that one thing, it's, I'm going to take he's a picture. He's doing a it. lip bite. He's <laughs> yeah. oh, he's gone now. They just he's kicked gone. him out. Yeah, I don't even good. know if this podcast is going to be a thing now. Because well, because it's 21 minutes in and we have no Clem, and since he's the guy who runs it, can he come back in? I would imagine so. Hopefully. Okay. All righty, chaps. Let's get to the first uh, topic. Are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> uh, spanking is back. Cassville School District Superintendent Merlin Johnson said he did not take a job a year ago with a plan to reinstate corporal punishment, a disciplinary measure the 1900 student Barry County District abandoned in 2001, but it's something that has happened on my watch and I'm okay with it. Cassville is a small town with a population of just under 4,000 people, 60 miles southwest of Springfield near the Arkansas Arkansas border. Parents were recently notified of a police approved in June by the school board to once again allow spanking in school but only as a last resort and with written permission from parents. Each family will be asked to opt in or opt out. I think this is one of the easiest questions I've ever asked you. Yay or nay to this shit? <laughs> I would rather get my ass beat than allow another adult to put their hands on my child. Like, there's just absolutely no shot I would ever allow it. None. I think I think you and I have had conversations, longer conversations, on spanking in general. And mm -hmm. I believe that it's something that's never worked for your family or something that you've never put into your family and you have your reasons to do it. And I respect that 100%. I'm the exact opposite. When my kids were younger and I wasn't a big hitter or anything like that, I would give them a smack on the ass, particularly when they had a diaper where it was just sort of one where it moved them along a little quicker. You know what yep. I mean? And I think it's different strokes for different folks as long as it doesn't cross into the, you know, the realm of child abuse. But this doesn't seem like something that would ever come up no, in a dude. civilized society. Like the no. way that the brothers used to hit me when I was in uh, I, Irish Christian brothers, don't think that I'm being racist here, was was absolutely unacceptable. So I don't understand how this would even be on the docket in a civilized society now. Clem is I, back. Clem, we, we didn't, we didn't skip, spanking, Clem. We didn't skip a beat. So I mentioned this Arkansas school that's trying to bring back spanking potentially. Yep. And even though Chaps and I are on the opposite sides of the spectrum in regards to perhaps spanking our kids at one time or another, who the fuck would sign up for this? Yeah. <laughs> and I, I think that one of the big reasons why I'm against spanking is when I am prone to have a temper. And I, like, I, I feel like whenever you're six foot and big and, things like that like putting your hands on your kids like it can get away from you like I, I i don't think my dad would have ever been abusive but i do think that it got away from him at times whenever he was spanking me and i didn't want to be in that position there was an incident we we saw this weekend i wasn't there but my my wife saw it and cardi saw it where a kid that was about nine or ten that was cardi's age was getting spanked in a target like in public and like the dad grabbing onto the girl's arm and like spanking her from the like from behind and like raising his voice cardi was like legit traumatized from it like went to the car and like cried like i can't believe that girl has to go home and deal with that kind of stuff and she was like why would your parents hit you like that and 
I understand what you're saying is totally different. Larger, you talk about yeah, diaper, yeah. like been 100%. on their way. Yep. But it like in that moment, I was like, yeah. When you phrase it that way, and you look at it as like an adult hitting a kid, like that's the only time in society that it's allowed to for you to hit another child or hit a person is when it's an adult hitting a kid. Like in, in, to me. I understand like baby getting ready to go put their hand on the stove pop it off no that's bad like to have that paired correction but other things like you were bad at school come here you're a school age kid i for me i i couldn't do it this is exactly that right because they're doing it yes, in a school that's exactly like, that I, I i would tell you what like by the time my kids got to school ages obviously that was a thing of the past for us and i will tell you that i think i told you this story once like my kid had mouthed off to me or did something at mouthed off to his mom at a Christmas tree lighting. And I said, and I, oh, and we were like in front of people. So I did one of those things like every now and again, I'll do like that. Like, I'll just like flick them a little bit. You know what I mean? Just to make sure they know <laughs> I did that to Mick and my finger caught his lip and my nail cut his lip and he started bleeding. And like I was like, holy shit! I just abused my kid with a finger. I went like yeah. this, hey, like look at me, like one of those things, and I cut his fucking lip. And I was like, holy shit! And now with these boys, like Finnegan, you know, is is doing two days. I think it's Hell Week for football before full, before yeah. school starts. He comes home <laughs> on his bike. He barely owns t-shirts with sleeves now. By the way, that's, that's, ah, yes, that's, yes, that's, that's true, a big yeah. move. What, you know, <laughs> what would I do to Finn? Like, how could a six foot five, three hundred pound guy judge what's correct and not correct before it's abusing my? Like, how does the physical right. stuff? But I don't have to do that because I just take away his phone. Like, yeah. you know, that's that's the, that's fucking child abuse nowadays. So, <laughs> you know, like I like I think there is a time and a place, very early time and place. But holy shit, this is this is geared right at Cardi. This is geared right at Sienna. And Cardi is a Not kid that Rikers. would get spanked for sure. AJ. No, AJ. Sienna is, will, will cry at the mere thought of a spanking. AJ is the one who I'm like. AJ's not there yet, right? Like, I don't. What what year is he? Oh, oh, oh okay. I thought you meant age wise. I, meant, I thought you meant temperament wise because AJ, yeah, he's going to be. Yeah, there. I'm beyond it. They're not spanking seventh graders, right? So that's right. my floor. But you guys still have sweet spots. Dog, the Fuck level of, I can't I can't even imagine the level of betrayal a child would feel if they knew that their parents signed a document that allowed another adult to hit them. Like it's <laughs> fucking crazy. Like it goes the opposite of what protective dad like the old adage of protective dads. If somebody messes with your kid in your neighborhood, your kid comes home, you go deal with that dad. Now you're fucking going to get that dad to spank your kid. Like it makes no sense. Are we being catfished? Is this no? A real this is a real story, story from Missouri. No. I had real. I had a triple check it, and yeah, you said Arkansas large. This is Missouri, which I don't. I'm know. I'm sorry. Where, yeah, the Arkansas like, border. It said I'm Arkansas. Sorry. I feel like I can see that <laughs> Missouri. I like to think that's the gateway to the West, right? What are we doing? But here? you watch <laughs> Ozark, you see I'm there next that's week. not that far fetched. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's, it's crazy. And what about the kids? Like when they're caught together, like they're both spray painting a wall. <laughs> and one kid has the scarlet Y, you know, my parents said yes to spanking yeah. and the other kid yeah. doesn't get it. It's, it just seems like an absolute debacle that they're putting in front of them, you know? So I'm thinking of know. the um, like attendance, the attendance cards or even like the class roster. And it's like, has the list of names. Then it has like, you know, remember, the, did you guys have this where it's like, what do you want to go by? It's like, I don't actually go by Anthony. I go by AJ. Right. And so they have that filled out. You know, allergies, nut allergy, which Chas doesn't believe in, <laughs> stuff like that. And then it would be like spanking. And then you get to see all the kids whose parents signed their yes, asses away. Yes, hand only. Yes, <laughs> belt. Yes, paddle. Yes, and electric chair. Like, the, no matter what. <laughs> that's the wildest thing of all is in all these stories, the thumbnail was the paddle. And I said, not only bringing spankings back, we're bringing the paddle back. And the, the ones that has like the drilled holes in it and shit. <laughs> Aerodynamic. Oh, sweet. Aerodynamic. <laughs> oh my god. And it also kind of make maybe like leaves a marker. Maybe like it's just I can't believe we live. If in my this. kid came home with a paddle mark on their legs from a principal, I would power bomb the principal. Like without question, I would walk up there and immediately power bomb him or her. How about this? Let's play devil's advocate for a second. Clem, I'm going to stop the hosting voice in a second because you no longer have uh, technical difficulties. But I'm curious. Are there people – remember when I had that incident with Bridget 
where the the kid had give her a slap on the ass, and then I went mm-hmm. at the kid, and the mom's like, "I'm a single mom, and um, you know sometimes this kind of gets away from me." You think there are parents who need help with the discipline, and they're kind of desperate, and at the end of their ropes are like, "I can't control the little bastard." If you think that you can, you know, slap away. You think that's what this is appealing to? Uh, hey, hey guys, wise <laughs> teacher, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that was the one thing I thought of this. I'm like, how do I spin zone this to see it from the other side? As I was like, basically begging my own son to stop kicking the shit out of everyone in the house, and we've tried every single method at this point. Uh, the spanking, and it's like, don't have to see how the sausage is made, but get to come home with a little lad that listens to me, maybe, even though he can't sit <laughs> on the couch anymore on his special part of the couch, he has to lay on his belly. Not the worst thing in the world. Maybe if like I get to know the, the the paddler, get to get to meet him. This should almost be a, a, a specific paddler, though, right? Like the principal, like the executioner. Not... Yeah, exactly. The guy who took down Ned Stark. He had like the black hood on, and you could kind of do that. He sent him like, you're like, you know, AJ, please go to the principal's office. Ooh, AJ. Please go to the paddler's office. Ooh, it gets a little louder, right? What if his teacher's hot? True. And all of a sudden, she starts to smack him, and he comes home with, like, one of those erections that's jumping off his body. <laughs> <laughs> we are I giving our the kids teachers pain. need, like, the kids, the kid who has the parent that probably needs the help. It's probably the kid that needs a lot of help, too. And I don't know if the whole paddle is the help that that kid needs. Like, if you have a parent that is not cognitively there. <laughs> yep. Yep. That, it's, 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 it's a tricky. And this, the Missouri-Arkansas border, I'm going to say there's a few parents that might need a little bit of help, too, there, chaps. Just blindly going to throw that out there. Definitely. Our boy, Large, how was the lung capacity there? Suddenly, Good. I, I was just thinking about hot teachers, and I just decided to check my lung <laughs> yeah. capacity while I was a little armed up. You know? Get a little woozy. Get a little woozy. <laughs> um, and then we're going to we'll, we'll, we'll move along to the next thing here. Chapsy sent this one. This was this was a wild ride. of uh, We have an Am I the Asshole here. Uh, am I the Asshole for not wanting to adopt one of my wife's children? I mean. Uh, my wife is uh, this. The, the husband's 41 wife is 39. I've been married two years for five total. She has two kids from a previous marriage, uh, 15 year old son, James, and an eight year old, uh, eight year old female, Becky met them both after about six months, moved in together. Becky Instead of asked- going through this, cause it's kind of long. You want me to just explain? Yeah. It? yeah. You, you give the break. The, 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 All the right. Note. So this, am I the asshole? Basically there's a woman that got married to another dude. She had two kids before the girl likes the new dad, likes the new stepdad. The son does not. They don't get along well. And the son has been very vocal about not liking him. Not that this is not my real dad. Very stereotypical boy getting a stepdad response of you're not my real dad type of situation. I don't really love you that much. I don't want to listen to you. And so the guy is going to adopt the girl, the his new daughter. The son does not want to be adopted by the dad. And now the dad does not want to adopt the son. He's saying, if he doesn't want to be with me that much, why would I put in this effort? He doesn't want my name. Why should he have it? All these types of things. Now, the wife thinks that the new husband is being a dick because he doesn't want to adopt the kid because the kid doesn't want to be adopted. That's essentially the scenario. Is this guy an asshole because he doesn't want to adopt a kid that doesn't want to be adopted by him? It's a dual, it's a like a mutual decision, like a mutual agreement to not adopt, to not be adopted. Yeah, I think that I think that's fine. I think if it, it would be weird if the kid wanted it, but it just seems I don't, I don't know. It kind of blew my mind. I thought this was going a different way when I started it. To me, I feel like in this instance, you listen to the kid. Like, if what yeah. difference does it really make legally? Like, you're still going to have the wife there and like a guardianship. You could sign like guardianship papers that he's able to make decisions at school or the doctor or whatever. I don't think it's that big of a deal, like where you're going to ruin your marriage over it. But I also, what's going on with this dude where the kid doesn't like him? Like, because a lot of times there's not like a huge reason for kids not to like a person like a, an adult figure that comes in and that is kind and that is patient and all those things and has good character and is demonstrating that to the kids. Most of the time, I would think the kids deal with that. Well, not all the time, but I would think most of the time eventually that they will start to like the other person. You guys agree? Two years into it. You yeah. Know, like this is, this isn't one of those like jump in the gun thing, like two years into the relationship. So knowing these kids for, a year and six months. I think he said he got in there about six months before he met them. 
maybe it's a little premature. I mean, the girl is eight, and maybe she's dying for the father figure regardless, and maybe maybe she might be easier to impress. And I don't mean that as a broad-sweeping thing, that little girls are easier to impress, because they're absolutely a not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, they're absolutely not. And, you know, if we give this guy the benefit of the doubt, because it seems like he's legitimately concerned about it, and the kid is just an asshole who doesn't want to be with this new guy who's banging his mom because he's 15. You know what I mean? Like his friends are talking about it and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Man, that's tough. All I can say is, listen, man, they go away pretty soon. You got to cherish this time with these kids, buddy, because <laughs> sooner or later, it'll be off to Tuscaloosa. Just fucking it up. <laughs> um, I don't know. I Like to Chaps is give the, the opportunity to kid, but can you do one without the other? That's a little bit strange, too. I think so. Know? I mean, just from my personal experience, like if my stepdad would have adopted my younger sister it would have made complete sense whenever they got married i was 13 she was five so the difference there and like growing up with somebody is just so extreme if he would have wanted to adopt my younger sister and not me because that's how it would have would have went if he would have been uh, like i want to adopt you can adopt cassie not me like i don't want to change my name i don't want to do any of that stuff so i could totally see it working out that way because i think as the older sibling you also understand that the younger sibling is in a very different spot mm -hmm. than you too mm -hmm. like at that age at 15 and 8 you understand the difference that that's your very much younger sister that's still going to be going through elementary school middle school and high school where you're on your way out and in three years you're going to be your own person anyway right that yeah i think the age kind of makes it even easier too because at three years probably just and if you don't want the guy adopting you're probably not going to be hanging around the house to hang out with him and your mom right all that much and the mom is still there to give all the parental stuff that needs to be done from a parent you would think so it probably causes so much tension between the parents like the because she thinks that the other the younger one gets favored and he's not trying hard enough with the boy and all that kind of shit too yeah so that was a pretty interesting one, Chapsy. The uh, yeah, that was so uh, we're saying not the asshole, right? That's basically. The... I'm saying it depends. I don't think you can have like a paintbrush that's going to fit all that mm -hmm. that wall every time. Mm -hmm. I, I think the guy is probably not the asshole in this situation, but I don't know what this guy should do. <laughs> like yeah, that's the only reason. Like I don't know what the what the right answer. Can a 15 year old kid? Can you force him to become adopted by you? Yes. And then really? when he turns 16 in then Texas, he can... anyway, I don't know about other states, but in Texas, yeah. for sure. <laughs> but then when he turns 16 or 18, he he then relinquishes himself from that adoption. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like the animosity that's going to be caused for a six, 15 going on 16. By the time he gets to 18, he'll be like, go right down to the fucking Social Security office and drop your last name and, you know, become, you know, whatever, something else like I'm. It's this is pretty convoluted. So I, I I say the guy's not an asshole because I don't know what the fuck to do. I actually side with the fella a little bit more. Yeah. Like, I, why would you force somebody to be adopted by you? That's not going to go well with a 14. I mean, imagine when we were 15 years old, if you had to force a new relationship, you'd be fucking furious. There's not a whole lot you could do about it, like in your position as a 15 year old. But that sure shit ain't going to make you want to have a relationship with somebody if you're forced to adopt. Uh, that's how Andy got me. True. <laughs> Speaking of Annie, how's she doing right now? How's she doing? I know how you're doing. You're joking through it. How's she doing? Uh, she's crying in the background. Oh, that was her just whining. <laughs> she, was, she uh he went he went on like some sort of thing last night and she he had sent her uh, uh some pictures of him. He had to dress up and um I went to the fucking kitchen. I'm like, What what are you looking at? She turned around like she was just cutting onions. You know what I mean? She's like, he doesn't even look like himself anymore. You know, <laughs> and look, look, this one, he showed me his shoes, just like he used to show me his shoes when he was a kid. I'm like, yeah, OK, <laughs> you know, everything. So it's it's I don't know. It's I don't know when the process stops. But uh, for right now, we're still a mess. We're going to have him in Vegas in a couple of weeks. Um, so, so that's good. So I, I didn't want I guess we could do it now because we'll be wrapping up I, and we're going to have it live on the show. People can see the real reveal. I was talking to Annie Large oh, no. to help you get you through this. We're giving you guys AJ for the next 13 <laughs> years of his life. <laughs> you guys can have him. At, you know, she said we can visit. Stu Leonard's is right there. We'll we should you guys put him on Stu's. pop pop duty. That's what yeah. we should do. <laughs> Let's see just how much you'd miss these golden years, as they say. Um, <laughs> so thanks for uh, breaking up. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you are, by the way. When Chap said that uh, fucking Costco was tainted, your your frozen face was this. 
very scary. And we didn't know if you were sticking with it because you were just legit traumatized or if you're an internet pro. I, I, so. yeah, I was, it blew my mind when the Costco, I'm happy I didn't stay around for the rest of that Costco slander right there. That would have probably hurt me even more. Large, let's, well, we can work out a trade. It's like when two teams have like problem children or it's like, you know, this player isn't working here. This player isn't working there. And we, we trade problems. Blue cheese for AJ. We'll try to figure out the other draft picks that'll get involved in that. You know, human for a dog is a very hard trade. I don't know which one's getting the, the, the short end of the stick right now, but we'll work something out. We'll, we'll take that, that offline. Good. Yeah, we'll look at it. Um, all right. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see you guys next week. And as always, stay safe and stay safe.